Hi, welcome to another episode of I Can Alter Exat with coaches Alex and John. This is John here. Today we're going to cover Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 5, where we're going to build an analytic app. Let's get started. Alright, so Weekly Challenge number 5, we, we get to build an app. An HR department has a defined hierarchy for job identification across the org. Depending on the job, the position within the hierarchy can change. Goal, create an app that allows an HR rep to enter a position number and return all records where the position is found within the hierarchy system. So we've got a hierarchy of four different levels with just some ID numbers and then just a position number that we're going to search for. Okay, and if that's the position number, then those are the records where that exists somewhere on one of the levels. Okay, so what we need is to create an app. So let's take these guys. Put this out here. So the first thing you want to do when you're making an app is in the interface panel, we'll use a drop down menu. Since that's what it looks like we've got in the picture over here. And we'll connect the bottom of it to the lightning bolt on this text input tool. Okay, enter the text or question to the display. They've got, please select position number. Then you have this option here of like where to get the list values from. So we'll just leave that alone for now. And down here, we're getting, we want to update the cell value. So expand, click update value, expand, expand the data whatever R stands for, I'm guessing that's like record and column value. So if we were to run this, oh, let me manually. And if those are, if those were our fields, then the drop down would have those fields in it. But I, but we can actually do better than that. Like we could definitely get all the unique values from this set and then just copy and paste them into this list. But I actually know of a better way. We're going to use fields from a connected tool. But what we have to do first is to figure out all of the unique values from here. So let's grab these two. So we want to transpose not going to select any key columns and that's just going to give us a single name field and a value field. So we get a lot of duplicates there that we don't care about. So we will connect a unique tool, unique values, let's run that. Okay, so now we have all the unique values but we have a null so let's do one more thing here. And we'll filter out where value is not null. All right, so we've got our 17 values, that's good. The issue is, and I've run into this in other tasks before. Oops. Let's bring this down here. If I were to connect this filter tool to the top of the dropdown, and then it's when you do that, it automatically gives you fields from connected tool. You, you can't do anything with it. And if I run this, you see, I can only select the fields. Like it says I can select name or value. So what that tells me, let's just go ahead and delete this, is I need to get my unique values as field names. So go back to transform and to do that, we'll connect a cross tab. We're not going to group by anything. We want our column headers now to be the values. And the actual values themselves don't actually matter. And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. So now in column headers we have all of our values. And where it says level 1, level 2, well, that doesn't matter at all. That's not going to come into play. So if we go ahead and connect this to the drop down, let's delete this browse tool and run it now. Hey, look at that. We've got our 17 
unique values. That's perfect. So now, so that person's gonna be selecting a value. So we need to have some way of tying this position number to one of these original values. So why don't we grab an append fields Okay, notice they're all integer types. Let's get rid of that. And if we run this, you see we have our four levels and then the position number. Wait a second. Yeah, look at that, their position number is five threes and ours only has four, so let's just add a three there. Okay, so now what we have to do is figure out every record where one of these four levels has that position number. So we'll connect another filter tool. We'll make a custom. We'll say we're level zero equals position number, and that's or let's copy and paste that. Level four, level oops. Level one, level two, or level three. And let's see what happens when we run that. This should be the answer. Yep. All right, they got position number first. Let's go ahead and bump that up so it's easier to compare the two. So there's our result set. Echo that perfect. Now, if we go ahead and run our app, I'll just leave the default one. Oh, whoops. So when, when you see there were no output files, to fix that, pull up the interface designer. So under view, interface designer. So this first tab is the layout view. It'll just show you know, that drop down menu. So we don't have to worry about that. The second one is the test view. That shows you what it's gonna look like when you run it. Tree view doesn't really help us here. What we want is the properties. And on success, show results to user. It's going to show one of these browse icons. Which one do we want? This is browse 75. Whoops, redock that. So we want to show browse 75. Now if we run it, let's select the five threes. And there we go. And just like that, we've built an analytic app with dynamic inputs, which I think is pretty cool. I don't like hard coding things if I can avoid it. So it's a little tricky. It's a little weird that you have to put your values as field headers. But if you're able to do that, you can have dynamic inputs, which is great. But that's all I have for you in this video. So thanks for watching. As always, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Data Coach channel for more awesome lessons on Alteryx and all things data, analytics, and visualization. Follow Data Coach on Twitter at AskTessellation and follow me personally at jemery underscore dataviz. Thanks again.